working tool garage. What am I working on this day? I'm working on my 2016 Dodge Dart SXT with a 2.4 liter engine. Doing an oil change on it because it's about that time. I like doing my oil changes at about 6,000 miles, but uh, this time I went a little bit over. I'm at about 6,700 miles on it because I was in the middle of moving and that's just kind of how life happens. All right, here's some of the things I'm going to be using. I got a drip pan so that I can catch the, uh, the old oil. I don't know how much that is. I got my oil filter. I'm going with the Mopar filter this time because the uh, I usually do the Mobile One, but Walmart was out of those, so I grabbed the Mopar, so that's also a pretty good filter. I have my filter wrench, so I'm going to get the filter off. And I'm going with the, the Mobile One 020 oil. Nothing special, just a regular advanced fuel economy standard, uh, standard stuff. Uh, there's some panels up underneath the car. Uh, access panels for the oil filter and drain plug. I forgot what size it is, but I think that a uh, standard size will fit either quarter or five sixteenths. So I'll get more detail on that whenever I get down there and actually uh, see what it is. And the same for the drain plug as well. There's the car. I just got done driving it, so I'm going to let everything cool down before I start the oil change. So one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop the hood. That way it can let uh, more of that heat out. And what I can do in the meantime is go ahead and get it jacked up and get it ready to drain. I'm going to wait for the oil to cool down before I start draining it and really messing with it. What it looks like on the inside, uh, just standard you know, modern looking engine, so nothing special there. Uh, the only thing that will need to be done up on the top side is uh, this is where the oil goes in, right here, and here's the dipstick right there. So it's hot, I'm just gonna let it kind of settle down a little bit and go do some other chores. And once it's cool, I'll come back and get this started. Under the car we go. Here's the oil filter little uh, access panel. The little bolt right here is a seven millimetric. Down a little bit and there is the oil drain as you see upside down with the little bolt right there that is also seven millimetric. I usually just yank the thing out. It's got little uh, hooks in it right there, but I just I want it out of the way so I'm not hitting myself as I'm, you know, uh, coming across here and smacking myself in the face or something. And probably too dark in there. But there is the oil filter. I'm not going to mess with that just yet. I'm going to drain the oil first. Uh, could have jacked this up just one more notch where a creeper. <laughs> Same thing, this. I just captured a screw, put it in my creeper. It's got two, uh, two little ones here. Ooh, got crud up in there. You know, just kind of try to work the thing out. Had crud back up in there. Well, I don't know what that was. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Wow. Anyways, drain plug is right there. So we'll see what size it is. I'm guessing. Let's set you down for a second while I grasp a few socket sizes that I think it might be. As I grow a few socket sizes, that I think it might be. It is a bum 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 half inch, so probably more of a 13 millimeter. 
but it, it fits pretty good, so I'm not <laughs> dirt to the face. Uh, not too worried about it. All right, so I'm gonna get my pan. <laughs> you weren't watching, were you? So this is a half inch. I'm gonna get my pan underneath, take that out. I can feel the oil still a little warm, but not not too bad. It's manageable, and let that start to drain. We're looking up there, see the, uh, oh, the shadow, <laughs> see the uh, oil filter area there, make sure there's not the old ring attached to it, right? Because sometimes the oil filter, little rubber seal on it will stick to the block. And then when you go to put your other oil filter on there, or part of it is stick to the block, and when you put your other oil filter on there, it will not seal. Then you dump oil everywhere. Important step. Oh, the other thing, make sure that the drain plug is in before you do that, because you'll need your drip pan, you'll need to move your drip pan over, right? It won't, unless you got a drip pan that can capture both, which uh, I'm not using mine that does that. All right. Here's a little tool I used to take the oil filter off. Uh, honestly, I'm having a little trouble finding one that fits this thing. Uh, I went through one and it was a little too big and this one's actually a little too small. Uh, but I can tap it on gently with a hammer and then get it on there. So what I probably need to do is just buy the little wrench style and stop trying to do the little custom fit one. All right, old filter. I see the rings attached. Nothing stuck on the block. New filter. This is a Mopar filter. There actually is a little bit of instructions on there. It's telling you, hey, wipe it down, fill it full of oil, put it on there, all that good stuff, then fill your engine up, check your dipstick. Pretty sweet they did that. A couple little things. Wipe the sweat because uh, we've been about uh, 50 degrees of the mornings getting up to the 70s, and today, it, I think maybe yesterday and today, it jumped up. Uh, 60 in the morning and like 85 during the day all right i like to i mean you use a rag or whatever don't matter that's i'm not too worried about engine oil per se but some of the harsher chemicals like lacquer thinner and when i'm painting and all that i don't like getting that on my hands all right so i got a fine coat on there i need to get my little um small funnel in there and pour that in i could just Try to do this and see if I can aim and hit it or make a mess. Make a mess and show you all, right? It's fine. It's a wood table. It, that'll only help seal it up. Oh. 
Actually, I think it's not bad to have a little bit of oil up on top because there's a little uh, seal in there so I can push that oil in there and get it on that rubber seal. All right, I don't want it dripping with oil. I just want a little oil coat on it. So the filter is ready to go back on. Okay, time to add the oil. Now, I still have the car jacked up because what I like to do is add the oil and then come through and uh, start the engine up and make sure that there's no leaks before I put all the covers and everything back on. I have had oil filters, brand new oil filters, leak and you know everything was all perfect and looked good. And uh, I tried several times getting it on there, double, triple striking things and the thing just leaked. So that can happen. Five quarts in here. This car takes five and a half quarts. And I think I put in where I need to be. And the reason is I know this engine uses oil, and I check my oil often. So given I don't put that half a quart in, what I do is I keep uh, an eye on my oil. When it gets a whole quart low, that's when I'll add that quart. All right, did we make this? Did I get the oil plug in? That's a good question before we start pouring this in. Uh, if not, you will have mess. All right, let's see what we got here. Looking like that. That's one of the ways I check for when do I need to change the oil is when it starts getting really yucky dark because your engine oil at that point is no longer oil, it's contaminants. Alright, I like having a little bit of rag because that will drip. Put that in there. And then I will get my keys and do a startup and see if there's anything that leaks out. And that'll tell me, hey, you know, do I have an issue right now? Instead of waiting until I try to pull it out or get it off the jack stands or something, then figure it out. And roll that beautiful car thing. Look underneath, no leaks, we're good. Okay, well, at least I didn't hear the little dinging noise. Okay, so that's temperature, 87 degrees. No big deal there, so I'm gonna hit my button on the steering wheel. Okay, I'm at 66.96, I'm gonna hold the reset. I use my A-trip to uh, look at my oil change, so I'm good on oil change. Uh, went down to 6% life. I'm going to hold the reset. Oh, I bet I have to have the key on. There it is. So the key has to be in run position for it to reset, but not running for it to reset. Uh, yeah, we got cold, and uh, it's complaining because my tire pressure dropped to 30. So I'll probably go through and make sure they're all equal pressure while I'm here. Speaking of tires... Whilst, wow, it's hot in there. No, no fans. Whilst you have your vehicle up in the air, set my keys down. Whilst you have your vehicle up in the air, this is a great time to check certain things like your tire wear. So, tire wear is 
categorized as that tire is done. That's all the life that I have on that. It's down to the wear bar. The wear bar being this little spot right here. I'm pretty much even with it. So uh, that's it. I'm, I'm down to the wear bar in the middle, which uh, I used to run a little bit more pressure in my tires because I found the dart. That's before I knew the dart. The little tire pressure monitor is about 2 PSI off, so I kept running them like 3, three or 4 PSI too high. Alright, so I'm going to try to gander at my brakes here. The rotor, I don't see gouges. I'm going to just kind of run my fingernail through there. Nothing's grabbing. They look to be in good condition. I don't see any burn spots in it. What I'll do is probably just get the kit or I order it. All right, I'm looking at my brake pad in there. I can see it. I'm going to see if I can get you to see it. I can see that there's pad left. I have replacement tires. So this next week, that's going to be my goal, is to get these tires here on the car, take it to the tire shop, let them do that. I am going with the Kumo Majesties. Uh, just the stock size, 205, 55, 16. What I have on here is the Sumitomo HDRs PO2s HTRASPO2s. I couldn't find those, so uh, I found the PO3s, but I didn't find the PO2s. I would walk around and let you see me talking to you, but you know, I'm like bald, fat, and sweaty over here. You don't want to see that. We'll <laughs> just look at cars. So uh, I was going to get the PO3s, but they were more expensive than the Kumo Majesties. And uh, this uh, tire rack comparison, I like what the Kumo Majesties look like as far as a tire rack comparison, and they were cheaper. So that's why I went with these. Now I saw my other tire, and it's all the way down. Let's find a wear bar right there. So see how far how much tread I don't have because this is all the way down to that bar. That's how much uh, tread life I have, which is like none. So it's definitely time to change tires. I like to do two one month and then two two the next month. And it kind of splits it up a little bit, right? So uh, as far as the Sumitomo HDR AS PO2s, I got 45,000 miles out of these tires. And I don't drive aggressively, so it's most of that was kind of interstate highway type stuff. All right, as I said before, did oil change on my 2016 Dodge Dart SXT with a 2.4 liter engine automatic transmission, which shouldn't matter. Um, that's how you do it, at least how I do it anyway. And if you like what you see, make sure to hit that like, uh, throw a comment on there if, if you like this, if you want to see more dark content. Uh, I had some for the suspension noise fix, and it's that's actually taken off pretty good. So you can see that right up here. Uh, that wasn't really meant to be a big video. It was just kind of throwing it out there, a little bit of dark content. And, well, y'all y'all have spoken with the, the views on that one. So I'm going to do more content on my dark. Anyways, enough rambling. If you like what you see, yet again, like. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And then make sure to share this so that other people can see this as well. Alright, I'll see you next time on Broken to a Garage.